Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of good parts. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me sure. Hello, this is Franz Cantor, Cartoons Illustrator and Toon Talker, and I'm here with... Jim Bridges, and I'm the President of the Australian Cartoon Museum here in downtown Docklands, Melbourne, Australia. And we're inviting you to dream a little dream with us, so... And is that, is that kid sitting on the moon, mm. a paper moon? Huckleberry Hound. Huckleberry Hound? No, no, Huckleberry I, I, I think it's Steven Spielberg. <laughs> what do you reckon? With a fishing rod? Yeah. <laughs> Could I be reckon. anybody. I reckon, you know, <clears throat> when, when he came out of uh, seeing um, Pinocchio the first time, mm. he said, one day I'm going to be a film director and make mm. animation like that. That's what I reckon. I don't know. The, you'll have to Google that and find out. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, use, I thought it was Huckleberry Finn, which is a little bit less interesting than Huckleberry Hound, but uh, no, Huckle- you know, Huckle- that's Huckle- good. Huckleberry Finn would have ragged trousers. Well, his ragged trousers, trousers are rolled up. Yeah, no, no, they're not. So there. maybe he's sort of. Uh, no, he'd be ragged. Yes. And he, he would have a pipe. He'd have a corn pipe in his mouth. There we are. Yeah. He, he smoked all, could, all kids should smoke corn pipes. Yeah. Um, and obviously, this is the art of DreamWorks animation, obviously, yeah. and uh, big piece of work. This is published by Abrams. Big, big piece of work. This. <clears throat> the Ab- people that make tanks. Abrams, that's the one. But they do a lot of art books, don't they? And make tanks, yeah. They make tanks. Yeah, Abrams tank. Okay, we'll, we'll so pass on that one. So uh, come on, get into it. Are here Open the pages. By Jeffrey Katzenberg. Let's have a look. Yeah. Ooh, all. Well, it's, it's, well it went black. With, it comes with a dandruff test. It did. So here we go. Oh, drawings are there. That's a nice drawing. Shrek forever after. That's a nice drawing. Yeah. So these are all to do with the production. All this is oh, going yeah. back in yeah. time. So it's all started with this, Prince the Prince of Egypt. And uh, no, this is a production it painting. It started with Ants. Wasn't Ants their first film? I think, no, no, this was 2D. So this was before Ants. Oh, okay. So this is um, their foray into into masterpiece um, yeah. musical Disney-styled um you know, Beauty and the Beast, that sort of stuff. This this film in particular was extraordinary. What do they call it? It's, Big concept films. Yeah, but it's, it's extraordinary because they could have made a lot of money out of the merchandising and because of the subject matter, because it's a Jewish story from the mm-hmm. Bible, they had a they few. Didn't. They didn't. They, they only did. Only they had a couple of things like a figurine. But this stuff. this film, The Prince of Egypt, I think it's it's it'll, it's an overnight classic. It yeah, gets, people appreciate better. It was and better a watershed the moment. There are a lot of things in Prince of Egypt oh. that you don't recognise that they, that they, they use, use today. They use scale. To... They use scale better than yeah. any other animated film I've ever seen. They use colour as a character. Yeah. They do wonderful time sequences that yeah. show how time passes. Yep. And and even the music, which I can't n- normally stand in these sort of things, um, that that the people don't sing it, but they think it. Mm. So they think they think the songs, which I really liked. Mm. And that's from. Um, so that's the, that the beginning, Ra- and that's that, the that that's from the beginning of DreamWorks, and this is towards the end. Yes. This is the um, uh, how to paint your dragon. <laughs> Paint your dragon and move along. <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> Prince, no, this is... Um, How to train your dragon. Train your dragon, yeah. not paint your dragon. So look at all the teepees over here. All of Actually, the, uh, I, reckon, no, they're all like, I reckon technically painting dragon could be one of the Viking hardest, houses. hardest jobs on the planet. Yeah. On the planet. Mm. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful drawing. This is, of course, uh, from Ants, which was uh, have a you wonderful seen, film. Have you seen it? I, it's, I thought... It's, I was actually, because I, I, I was a big fan of Pixar, and I was prepared to hate uh, Ants because I liked Bugs Life. Yeah, but didn't Bugs Life come out two weeks before? Uh, two um, weeks after it. Uh, sorry, Ants came out two weeks before Bugs yeah, Life. Yeah, yeah, something like that. 
Or well, two I, weeks I, after, I, I'm not sure exactly. I did a review on Ants years ago, and mm. I said it was the best film that Stallone's ever made. Well, he's he, surprisingly, <laughs> he is really, really good he, and his funny. His acting is extraordinary. He's very he? funny. He's a very funny actor. And, um, you know, and the play between the two, the banter between um, uh, um, uh, um, Spielberg, the banter between the two characters. Um, I'll never forget. What's his name? Yeah. Oh, yeah, him, yeah. Yeah. Rocky. Yeah. Woody Allen. Woody Allen and Rocky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not good. I'm rotten with names. Um, the banter between uh, Stallone and uh, Woody Allen it could have is been a really, con- really it funny. Could have been a contender. And, you know, to the effect that uh, it's like a buddy film. Come on, it's move a really it, good move buddy it. film. Oh, look at that. Again, you know, Ants, uh, if, if you were to look the, at Bud's life, you'll see picture. the same that's sort the of exploration of in, with watercolours and colour pencil and crayons and things. Of all this minuscule world of, you know, what does it feel like? What does it look like? And it's like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, you know? It's that style of... Uh, <coughs> of um, um, Coca-Cola? Of detail, yeah. Look, the, you know, the big things in yeah. the world, the found objects But Ants is in a this darkish jungle. film, whereas um, Bugs Life is a really sort of... No, it's dark. Bugs Life's much darker. N- no, Bugs Life's very light. No. Yes, it is. No. Oh. The, the locusts? I don't think no, so. No, 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 I'm talking about the colours. Oh, you mean the colours? The colours, yeah. it's very... Well, most of it, it doesn't Bugs happen life underneath is, the ground. In, in ants, yeah, it's all Bugs about... Yeah, Bugs Life is a magnificent seven, you know? Mm. Yeah. But this is a little bit more complex. Yeah. It looks like a science fiction film, doesn't yeah. it? It's yeah. Lovely, um, lovely character designs. Beautiful stuff. Now, the best thing about this book is the Pretty character elegant. designs. The best thing about this book is the character designs. Yeah. You have to really... I have to see this film again. It's, it's an extraordinary um, achievement, I think, um, for DreamWorks to, t- to take on... I mean, with... with um, they took on Disney. Well, yes, but... And beat them at the, their own game. In many respects. Certainly with um, Prince of Egypt, they beat them oh. at their own game. But with uh, Ants, I think they took on Pixar, which is an even bigger whale. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Pixar, in many ways, is more Disney than Disney. So to take Ooh, on Pixar... God, you've got to be careful what you're saying here. We're no, it's more Disney than... It's We're more going di- to get hate mail. Well, di- Pixar is more like how Disney should have been. Ah, now you're talking. And uh, you're they dis- weren't. So Disney dropped the... They dropped the ball many they times the ball, in, their, yeah. in their career. Yeah. So old Walt... Uh, That's a great... Probably dr- spinning it's around it's in his drawing? grave like a top... A great drawing? Yeah. Is that a... Carter Goodrich. Ah, our old so, mate... Yeah, Carter Goodrich does a lot of uh, characters. We love him. Prolific, really beautiful pencil style. And, um, you know, and he's so proficient at all of these different characters. What he's really good at is finding these angular possibilities of of characters so that they're like caricatures in a way of of animals and people. And, you know, it's a beautiful sense of realism that he brings in to the character designs, which then make an incredible uh, impact on the screen yeah um because it's so it's such a different feel look and feel to you know pixar and disney which are more sort of like um many hands design the characters it goes through so many different iterations yeah, the sausage machine having carter goodrich like a single idea single character yeah a single character designer perfect a character himself without going through all these different eyes and different iterations mm is a really good sign of a great director. And I think you've got that with, uh, you know, the people that, that uh, 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 worked at DreamWorks. I mean, s- primarily you've got Spielberg, um, who, you know, is no, sh- he's no shrinking violet in, in getting his hands dirty in terms of uh, changing things on, on the set. But at the same time, he does recognise, um, you know, talent when it comes up and certainly allowing Carter Goodrich to, to l- let... His own, um, uh, you know, greatness sort of, uh, and his own sort of uh, um, direction uh, take the characters into some special, perfect world, mm. perfect design. Carter's brilliant at that. Open, so, open season. Kudos open to. Open season is terrific. Too. Yes, open season, exactly. Mm. Carter Goodrich. Uh, because, because a lot of his original designs sort of survived in, in the characters. It, yeah, in many they ways. They didn't get sort of swamped by what the process of the sausage machine. You know? Yeah, well, you know, we. I mean, exactly, but that makes the film great. 
yes. in my opinion. Yes. Because it's it's it has a sincerity yeah. uh, to it and a truth to it, which is only possible by you know having single visions rather than multiple yes. visions or double visions yes. or triple visions or yeah. blurry visions like Pixar. Yeah. Um, Pixar, Pixar are great, but the end result of a Pixar film has just been sort of, you know, machined. All of the hard edges have been taken away and becomes less interesting. DreamWorks, to me, to my sensibility, and I, I'm only speaking from my point of view, but DreamWorks are a better product than Pixar. So there you go. I've, I've said it. I've let the cat out of the bag. I love uh, DreamWorks' as films. I've loved it from the very start. And I enjoy their products. I enjoy their character designs. Well, The Prince of Egypt, I reckon, is one of the great animated films. If if if, if you had a if you had five seeing this great, on the big screen, if you had five great animated yeah. films. Yeah. it has to be in that five. Yeah, seeing these on the big screen yeah. is phenomenal. It's like you can see the brush strokes. It's just yeah. incredible. As I said it's before, so, the so scale, exciting. the scale. Yeah. The um, the color, very color very is a character. Exciting. They yeah. do time Look well. The music is, the and moods. you know, you really. Um, they, Look they how have that Carter, funny animated Carter is thing. Just, he'll he'll tackle anything, yeah. and he'll bring his own special qualities to it. He has this beautiful cross hatching um, um, uh, tonal work, you yeah. know, to create. It's lovely, actually. It's lovely. It's, it's soft and lovely. Yeah. yeah. So when he gets into um, character designs for three dimensional puppets, three dimensional yeah. uh, characters, you know, for um, it's also got season. one of the best beginnings of any animated film I've ever seen. It just starts off with the chariot race. Yeah. And, and all the scale of the, you know of the, this, the yeah. Building, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty exciting film. Um, and this this scene of the Angel of Death is chilling. That's, I've never seen anything like that. This whole sequence, this beautiful mood boards, yes. which take the, the idea of storyboards into another dimension. So um, uh, DreamWorks really perfected this idea of the emotional journey of the film, um, charted with colour. And yeah. they were the ones that first invented it, yeah. um, and they really perfected it. And, uh, um, you know, and really... Disney are uh, obviously enamoured of that uh, of concept because they used it for every single film since then. Also, it, I mean, it's a love story between the Look brothers. Look at Carter Goodrich again. It's, 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 Beautiful. A, it's a relationship between the brothers. Yeah. Moses and his brother. Well, it, it's sort of... Well, it's family, and the, and the destiny, father. friendship. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all of emotional things that... Yeah. That ring true to us. And, that and makes people it are really inspired look at by the, the burning, landscapes. The burning bush sequence. Yeah. And the and especially when when the, the, but, they part the waters, it's just I don't know. It's you know it's look, a miracle. You're looking at a miracle. <laughs> You're looking at pure magic in that film. Exactly. But you know, DreamWorks. Uh, when you let an illustrator go, when you let illustrators go and say, here's a, here's the ball. You know, play with it. Um, what what comes up is this, right? Which is it's never existed before. It, it's like magic. This is a whole new world, <laughs> a whole new way of explaining how things work. A and, whole new yeah. world. Mm. Okay. Yep, exactly. That always shuts that's you up. That's how I feel about it. That always it. shuts you up. Yeah. The Road to El Dorado. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Oh, mag magic, uh, magic film, The Road to El Dorado. Fantastic film, you know. Disney did another beautiful film at the same time, which was... Uh, uh, South American inspired, very very inspirational. Uh, both of these films together, I, I love watching them. Road to El Dorado and um, uh, Emperor's New Groove. Yes. I just adore them. They're fantastic. Um, well worth looking at. Watch them both together. Why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Look at oh, look at those characters. Maybe yeah. Maybe. So you know, letting the illustrators conduct. <laughs> their instruments, which is their creativity and their imaginations, you get such incredible variety and and um, re and believable sense of um, uh, uh, details. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. These are these huge Spanish galleons, you know, but uh, rather than uh, drawing them, uh, you know, realistically or super, super uh, uh, stylized for a, it's, it's still a 2D film. Um, they created something astonishing. The, the, the character and the detail of this up. film is amazing. And, and the color. 
And don't, you know, you cannot underestimate the colour of uh, what DreamWorks has achieved with this, uh, with the, this film. Beautiful stuff. Look at this. Magic. It's absolutely magic. It's a bit of Jungle Book in it. Yeah. What's well, more Jungle Book than Jungle Book, really, isn't it? Ah, more Lovely. Jungle Book than Jungle Book. Yeah. I mean, look at that. That's a really beautiful gouache painting. It's lovely. Look at some of these axolotl inspired um, fantastical animals of the South American um, Incan, uh, you know, world. And the architecture... It's just, just the, the undergrowth, the, the incursion of the jungle into the, into the, into the architecture. It was just uh, so beautiful to see all this stuff. Magical stuff, magical world. Ah, this is Chicken Run. So they took on uh, Ardman. No? Uh, Ardman, yes. Uh, other than uh, Chicken Run, I think they did another uh, one which they tried to create uh, uh, a CG Wallace version. And Gromit. No, it wasn't yeah, Wallace. Yeah, they did. It's in the book. We'll talk about that in a second, but um, Chicken Run was traditional stop motion animation done by Ardman, um, and they stewarded, stewarded it. So they um, allowed the um, film to be directed properly by people that are working. You know, well, the whole thing was properly by, done by, by Ardman. By Lord and Park, yeah. the guys who, who started up Ardman. Extraordinary film, really, really well done. Stalag um, you know, 17 in, um, yeah, in Chicken. In chicken, in in, uh, in animation. Yeah, there's some of the um, bits and pieces. Bits and pieces, bits and bobs. The um, casts of the models. That's that's an, that's a, that's an original chicken bone. Uh, yeah. Okay. What do you mean? That's a chicken bone. That's yeah, a chicken, chicken foot. Yeah, chicken foot. Mmm. You like this great. film? I love this film. And okay. I love the bus sides that they did to advertise this. They had some great things. Poultry in Motion was one. Bus sides? Yeah. They, oh, ads. These ads. Yeah. Poultry, they, in motion. poultry in Motion. Poultry in Motion. That as opposed was a to killer. Poultry in Motion. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, they come up with some that. killer gags. Yeah. Killer gags. Shrek. Oh, Shrek. Okay, Shrek. so I um, actually. I forget what was happening. There was a lot happening in. in um, 2001. There were a lot of uh, films uh, yeah, that came was, out. There was Space um, Odyssey, and there was. Uh, so Shrek is based on this uh, really grotty uh, children's book um, by a great New Yorker cartoonist. Yeah, and um, look at that! Look yeah. at that! Wow, what a page to turn into! Eh? What? Look at that! I can't read that. That's not cartoons. No, it's a different uh, pen style, different brush style. So this is more like the, again, more, kind of sort of like where the original cartoons were, the illustrations were going, um, or an interpretation of that stuff. This is what you missed this out on. Early That's days. what you missed out on. Well, well, that could have been Shrek. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked as well. <laughs> um, where they went to with Shrek, uh, oh, that's very Maxfield Parish, that, isn't it? Well, the colours are. It's lovely. The, with the low are. lights. So they created this uh, believable world that uh, references a lot of great uh, um, illustrative and fantasy moments of uh, um, uh, 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 Andrew Wyeth and yeah. um, Frank Schoenhofer and great painters of the time, the Brandywine School and now, indeed uh, Maxfield Parish. This this is a little film, Spirit. It's mm. about a Spirit horse. Spirit of a Cimarron. It's about a horse. Yeah. Um, it was, when I say it's a little film, it, it sort of came out and it left and it went, you know. But the best drawings of horses mm. I've ever seen, um, especially in animation, is in this film. Mm. It's just, if you like horses... Well, these are production designs yeah, for it, like so horses, the actual animation and the style of the film diverged quite a lot from these things. Yes. These, these yes. are very Bambi-ish. Very, very, yeah. you know, moment in the well, forest, the yeah. secret of the forest. The moment in the forest. Yeah, the, you know, the secret in the forest, right? The heart of the forest yeah. is, the, is the, the king of the forest, the stallion or whatever it is, you know? And the emotion that the animals have, their sort of, uh, yeah, their moment. They're horsing around, look. But, uh, look how beautiful that is. It's a lovely... Uh, look at that tail, my God. Look at that tail. Not in the film, of course, but, yeah. you know, there you go. 
So they, they um, try to express the landscape quite, quite beautifully. Obviously, you've got horses galloping, uh, trains and cowboys and things traveling and traversing across the landscape. So you need to sort of, you know, render it in a believable and romantic way. It's very dramatic. Don't I haven't for, seen the new film. Don't forget the Indians. There's a new Cimarron uh, at the moment um, playing in, on, I think, in cinemas or about to play in cinemas. Look at this stuff, the, um, the, the speckled lighting of, uh, you know, wherever, whatever that is, the sun shining through some fence or something or trees. So these are production paintings trying to explore possibilities for the animation. You cannot get this sort of rendering in animation in 2D animation. Um, it's very, very hard to even do it in 3D animation. But it's good that they've tried to explore it, you know. This is incredibly uh, moody. That sort of mm, a, mm. a very Indiana Jonesy sort dun, of dun, um, dun, 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 dun. effect. Exploring, you know, colours and things like that. There's everything here, colour becomes, the landscape becomes a character almost in these films. So... That. It's a, the, uh, the, what's the guy? Maxfield Parrish used to do clouds and mountains as well. Mm. But, and this sort of pool of light, this god light that's coming down. God light? Yeah, yeah the spotlight through the clouds. Ah, they call that god light, don't they? Okay. Yeah, it was another illustrator that used to do a lot of these um, uh, early Western style. They brought sort of a, a, an English um, or a, a romantic notion to the landscape paintings of America. So they weren't traditional in the sense of an impressionist stroke, an impressionist's view of American landscape, but more of a, 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 a European interpretation of an American landscape. Yeah, yeah. Very much how Australian impressionism before Street, um, you know, explored. Yeah, but the light was different. different in, the light in America and Australia is very different to what it is in Europe. And it was the light, the main, was the thing that really differentiated. Yeah, they they brought their European painting styles to Australia. Yeah, but the colour had to change. Mm. Look at these beautiful the uh, caricatures of uh, cowboys and the different uh, outfits and things. You know, you got the, the the gold diggers or something, I guess. Or look at the beard shapes and the different uh, colours and you know the hats, the way they used to wear them, more of a sort of a Mexican style. Um, you know the the um, the railroad um, owner, owner yeah. that type of stuff. You know all of these tropes they used to explore. And these, by the way, you, you're looking at these and you're thinking, oh, we'll turn the page. We've seen that. Fine. No, 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 no. These are referencing pictures, photographs of the time, and also 1920s and 30s silent films of uh, cowboys, uh, westerns, and things like that. So there's a lot of rich heritage that they're, the illustrators are referencing for all of these designs. It's not just something out of their imagination. They're exploring and they're investigating. And that's what brings these details, this level of details, into the story. Whether or not they end up in the final picture is anyone's guess, but uh, I, from memory, I think they're not. Well, Abrams, but, Abrams is, a, is an art um, a publisher, and they're not really um, interested in the draw of the characters so much in this book. There's a lot of backgrounds, a lot hmm. of no, painting, a, lot yeah. of painting and Well, they do explore characters here a little bit. So yeah, this but, is from uh, Sinbad. This is Sinbad and his offsider. Um, I can't remember his name. Beautiful looking film, um, referencing a lot of uh, you know great um, Sinbad films of the of the time of, mm. of uh, bygone days, and also you know there's a little bit of history too because there's a there's a very Spanish uh, and Venice uh, yeah well, Venetian yeah there's a lot of um, I think this is um, oh, I can't remember the name. It's a Spanish city. Moorish. It's very Moorish. Yeah, very Moorish. But it's a Spanish capital. It's a Moorish cap Moorish style of building. Spain. Yes. Toledo? Something like that. I can't yeah. remember. But that's where the, the, oh, that's El Greco's the city town. starts. That's El Greco's town. Ooh, that's a nice So I don't have a you know a combination of these massive uh, um, Romanesque mm. buildings and well and they're, they're, tower, mixed, tower they're mixing and their and architecture up, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. it was a, a viaduct. Viaduct. And uh, you've got a lot of this uh, 
uh, beginning, this is the production painting, so that they started to bring in a lot more CGI into the effects yeah. in, um, in Sinbad. So that's why you've got a lot of stuff like this. There's some great scenes of uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, who did the voice, I think, of uh, the witch. Look at this island here, which is a fish. Is that beautiful? This is a, a famous um, idea from medieval times. Mm. There it is, even better, just mm. explore it. Look how beautiful that colour is, that mm. illustration. is magnificent. And uh, water's hard to do, isn't it? Water's hard to do. Yeah, it's hard to draw water. Especially in watercolour. You see the light coming through. That, that line, that yeah. light coming through this, this wave. Translucent. Reflecting. Is that the word, translucent? Well, see that orange? Yeah. The, the sea is not orange, right? Yeah. So this green is coming from this sky here. Yeah. That's going through the, the lights passing through here. Yeah. The, that light's also passing through the sails of the ship, which are orange. And that's how you get this sort of orange ref, ref, reflection <laughs> in, the, um, in, the, in the translucent wave. It's really cool the way they've done that because it kind of brings the whole piece together as an illustration. This is lovely, wet, impressionistic style of uh, the architecture and uh, looks very Venetian. Very Venetian, yeah. You know, none of this style, none of this light is, in, is to any great extent reflected in the movie itself. Walk the plank, they ride the hook. They simplify a lot of the uh, choices that they make, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, you know, it's still a good product. Well, they so have to move. It's yeah. all out movement, isn't it? Well, it's standardised and, and in a production. Again, I think um, this is Marina, the... Um, I think it's Angelina Jolie, perhaps, or someone, I can't remember. Is that based on the song? Yeah, Sinbad's actually based voiced. based on the song? Blue Moon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is very... Um, yeah. Well, they've, they've pinched those uh, things from... Um, Asia, and they've turned. There's one or two of them like that where the rocks um, are weathered and they've, they've been a whole lot of them. Oh, yeah, but that's very Sinbadish. Oh, is it? Okay. Mm. Shrek. Oh, well, we're, we're back to Lollipop Town, aren't we? Yeah, this is Shrek 2. So yeah. Shrek 2 is where he meets the parents. It's their version of meets the parents. Okay. Um, it's quite funny. It's not as funny as Shrek 1. Shrek 1's. Of course, uh, hilarious. Shrek one had Alleluia in the credits and it went berserk. Yeah. It became an international hit and it was in the credits. Yeah. Not this a good film. That's a lovely um, moment. That's beautiful. They pinched that tree from Avatar. Look. <laughs> Everything's what, what, stolen. Avatar's stolen from other trees. Yeah. This is beautiful. And that's Escher. That's a lovely, nice Escher it's a lovely piece. So it's funny, uh, these are impressions for uh, the construction, obviously, in 3D, which they have to be modelled and then painted and textured and things. And then you end up with this, which is um, very lollipopish, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I just find it's interesting, but it's not great. I'm not in love with the Shrek franchise because it's sort of, you know, you, you, you promise something over here. You promise something which is more impressionistic and more sort of storybookish and then you end up uh going for a full commercial yeah. um well it's brilliantly it's, lit environment and it just sort of it's like fairy tale it's, land. It, it's fairy yeah. tale land as opposed to funny. the dark this bits. is a funny exercise of ginger gingerbread because yeah, they're all storybooks uh <coughs> fairy tale characters this is the design for the for the father again you know, you can uh, a lot of uh, DreamWorks characters are sort of like cookie cut in a way. They all sort of derive. They're almost like they derive from one model. Um, uh, we'll talk more about that as we go f go forward. So th this is where I kind of say, you know, well, in this area, once you get into the 3D, this is where um, Pixar actually pick up the ball and uh, do a better job than. Um, Dreamworks. Well, Shark Tales. Shark Tales, out. interesting. Um, it was rushed out because they had to do um, had to compete with Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo, yeah. But it's a very interesting uh, premise, uh, Shark Tale. It's about uh, you know, it's about gangsters and, and the underworld and things like that. So they had to create this uh, this environment, this uh, city that's under the sea that's under the sea has comprom has comparable um, oh this is Angelina Jolie has comparable uh, uh, you know 
um, uh, uh, recognizable narratives. This is actually very funny, the scene where they That's intimidate Eddie. this shrimp. That's Eddie Cantor. Mm. Yeah. The great big googly eyes. Mm. The sharks, I thought, were really well done. Um, it's very hard. I could never have... I'd, it would be very hard for me to think of, of well, they had constructing a, or designing they had a shark that has um, to use fins as fingers and hands. No, but and they had a like great... Um, they did a really good job. They had a great uh, bouncing this is board a lovely off, scene. off the, the sharks in um, Nemo. Mm. Again, you know, they lose a lot of this subtlety and impressionism mm. of the lighting, mm. um, and they and they favour a more sort of a, you know like a kitchen lighting uh, effect where everything is in sharp focus and there's nothing sort of left to the imagination, which is a shame because you know just having the ability to to create anything doesn't mean you should show it always. Um, you should kind of leave uh, an. Imp- you know, film should be more of like a spotlight, or only like a painting. You only paint the, the well, important elements, and yeah. the rest of them are rendered off. Yes, I love that because that's like Frazetta, isn't it? Yes. Frazetta doesn't yeah. finish every single bit of the painting, but Boris does. But, and unfortunately, but you've got, you've you're not got, interested in, you've in got Boris's. This, you've got this Disney tradition of details. everything's hard lined and. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't have to be. Everything's in focus. Yeah, but it doesn't you know have I mean? to be like. No, that. no, no, it doesn't. And occasionally, occasionally they will um, exercise. They will let the illustrators and the character yeah. designers whoosh off they go because and they come up with with sheer brilliance, yeah, which the, is the, the animals in this are, for I Madagascar. Mean, you know, they they could make forty yeah. of these movies, so and you'd never get sick the of the color, characters. the backgrounds, everything beautifully done uh, with uh, Madagascar. Um, except the people. I don't like the humans. It's, again, getting back into cookie cutting. Humans are very, very difficult uh, to do, but we'll talk about that another another time. There are examples, um, primarily in, I think, uh, um, meatballs. What's that called? Um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and uh, Hotel Transylvania, where I think humans are better... The designs of humans are a little bit more interesting. Um, the animals here are faultless. They're really beautifully explored. Um, I love the colours. The colours here are very rich and inviting for a, for a jungle scene. Um, look at these baobabs. How can you not love that? Um, you know, that just the whole idea of Madagascar and uh, all of these characters is fantastic. This is voiced uh, King... Um, what's his name? Voiced by... Um, Crazy actor, Borat. Um, oh, Sasha. Yeah, Sasha Baron Cohen. Thank you. So look at these. Are, these are these are models or sculpts. These are sculpts of trees, just to give you sort of this this overriding um, uh, 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 look and feel for this environment. It's kind of like it's like a uh, everything mushed into a jungle. It's like you know Africa's a big place. There's jungles and there's savannas and there's this that and the other. In Madagascar, it's all sort of like squished all into one, so you've got these big baobabs uh, interacting with ferns and, and, um, and um, you know, things like that. So it's just really quite an a, a interesting uh, environment. The penguins, I think, took the show. They stole the show just yeah. by their, their natty uh, um, antics and, and uh, personalities. And they're really... Their movement. Yeah. They, yeah. And, and they went off into a spin-off. There was a yeah. spin-off uh, TV still show, spin- I think. They're still spinning off, I think. Well, they're, they're, again, they're, you know, they're, they're very, very popular. Yeah. They're very popular. These characters are beautifully stylized, you know. Um, yeah. They were lovely. So, again, keeping to the... Uh, you know, not having too many hands look at the... Uh, at the character designs. Just don't machine all of the imperfections off. Leave the imperfections there. This is what makes great 3D characters. So here we go back into Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, which was a... Um, I don't think it was a big popular s- blockbuster for them. But it was interesting and nice and slick, um, but still 3D, still um, well, stop Well, most of the films nice. they made in it, their first, Wallace and Gromit, <laughs> She's a beautiful they're character. 25 minutes long. Yeah. And I <laughs> think, you know... Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny. The Wallace and Gromit is a series. A, they're incredibly you know, British. Yeah, Intrinsic, I love that. Intrinsically though. British. Yeah. yeah. I just love it. That's just really cool. All right, over the hedge. Um, interesting. Um, will you, um, 
Shatner's in it. He plays a, a, a character, I think a, a, a possum or something. Anyway, um, so Over the Hedge is kind of sort of like... Uh, um, well, they're all scared to see what's out there. They're, they're all living... Over the Hedge is based, I think, based on a it... comic strip, which is uh, called Over the Hedge. Okay. And uh, the interaction of, with, you know... With natural two nature Africa... to, to urban life. Yeah. 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 Well, it's sort of like nature on the verge of... Yeah. Of of suburbia yeah, and how yeah. they interact with humans and things. Yeah. So again, you know, there's a lot of um, great designs. Let's delve into a little bit more. So I'm not sure if Carter Goodrich worked on this, which would be interesting because he also worked on on um, that other one, uh, Open Season. These are lovely. So they, again, because it's based on a comics on a comic strip, so I think these are um, these are very this is very storybook illustration. Mm. Well, the, they they don't really uh, this book doesn't really um, it doesn't go into a lot of details, does it? But you know, no, but I mean, you, no, you get a, but it's an overview. Uh, but yeah. they're more interested. The publisher is more interested in getting the art in it as yeah. opposed to the characters. Right, now here we go with Flushed Away. Now this is like where the first time they've allowed CGI to interpret the, th um, the stop motion uh, plasticine like characters. So where you have like, uh, you know, plasticine, the uh, look and feel of a lot of the um, characters and, and uh, effects in the stop motion uh, before, now you've got a CGI interpretation of it. And it's interesting, but I, I think it's Tennis too balls. smooth. It tends to sort of make it look really um, too machined, and I think that is a very uh, that is a problem. You've used that word machine five times, I think. You've well, you know, you t you sh you're sort of planing all the ah, all better. the imperfections. Yeah. Off. The rough edges. Yeah, the yeah. fingerprints. Get rid of all the fingerprints, and the uh, fingerprints that's good. are what Get makes it interesting. Get rid of the finger. That's right. Yeah. That's. I like that. You can say so that's that a, that's an overall. I mean, these are production illustrations for the film. They give you a, a you know an impression of the details that's, yeah. that's gone into it. Which Great is, ideas which too. Is important. Great ideas. But you have to remember that th there aren't any fingerprints on this anymore. No. It's all CGI. It's an impression of stop motion, but now it's very very slick. So it doesn't have that jerkiness. Definitely, uh, that stop motion is known for. Um, but also, it's it's somehow robbed of a lot of its uh, personality, I think. And texture. Yeah, texture, the human element. Um, so interesting as an experiment, but does it sit on the shelf next to the other Nick Park stuff? No. Shrek the Third. This is a lovely. I uh, love these antique um, map concepts. This sort of giving a, um, a storybook uh, mm. effect of, uh, of Shrek. The classic, Third. classic. So, um, so they haven't fleshed out a lot of the world of Shrek. Um, they've only, you know, introduced little bits and pieces of in, in uh, the first two films. Now they're trying to sort of give you a little bit of background on the, on the characters and some other problems. I think this is where. Um, Oh, all the characters are sort of set in their ways and kind of reflecting on their life. That's a very um, Western uh, cowboyish sort of uh, look. Mm. Campfire stories and things like that. These are nice. This is lovely, isn't it? Oh, Pinocchio. That's good. Um, again, you know, trying to, I, I guess... Look at the trees. I can't remember where they... Look um, the trees. They often did uh, parodies on Hollywood or Disneyland mm. or something. There was a Disneyland. There's several Disneyland-ish um, implications. This is Go Go Away, uh, like Far Far Away, uh, which I think was was like the Hollywood uh, sign. And these castles, the crenellation of the palace-like castles. And it was originally called Hollywood Land, that yeah, sign. this is a very um, yeah, nice, Lord they? of the Rings. They're nice. Old, old Man Willow. I love all this. Uh, you know, the illustrators really go out overboard and explore all these uh, um, styles, the Tudor banners and the mm. structures mm. and textures and... You know, a lot of this, the lighting effects that uh, that you saw from, uh, you know, the classic illustrations of Wyeth and, 
Schoenhofer and uh, even uh, the brothers Hildebrand with their first ah, the uh, forays yes. into the calendars of look, uh, look, look at the cloud. Is yeah. that, is that, yeah. is that um, Henry VIII or is it uh, <laughs> yeah. Orson Welles? Yeah. Is a, that Orson Welles? It's, a, it's yeah. an exploration. They're, they're referencing older illustrators, yeah. uh, you know, from 100 years ago. They try to give that sort of, uh, you know, feeling of history yeah. in the, this structure. Oh, I hate that. That's... Uh, that's Maleficent. Yeah, well, that's from uh, <laughs> Sleeping terrible. Beauty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a, uh, you get into the sort of... The, whenever they do humans or human characters, it's sort of like getting into sort of... Because of the level of realism and lack of uh, really coherent design, I think uh, it's really cookie-cutting. But it's, it's hard to do humans tough. with computer animation. No, it's not. It is. It isn't. Well, it used to be. No. Um, this is the B movie. So quite beautiful looking film. Didn't look anything like this. Not as beautiful as that. Again, very machiney looking. Is that, um, is that the uh, Seinfeld? Uh, yes. Uh, story. Yeah, yes. Okay. That's the Seinfeld character. Yeah. So interesting. Again, you know, like uh, the humor style of uh, of um, of uh, Woody Allen. Um, you know, you you allowing Spielberg to deliver these uh, sort of. Um, in his his mode, his mode of comedy. Central, Central Park. Yes, up here. That's a famous yeah, um, a tunnel. Park, yeah. Was used in Home Alone too. So um, you know the it, bee production, the honey production. Yeah. Um, it, it's like yeah, yeah, it's interesting. If, if, but if you allow the the the, the imaginative. Um, well, this work. is this is the imaginative stuff. This is done by an illustrator, and obviously he's referencing the nineteen. Uh, early 1960s illustration style. Um, this would be interesting if they'd done this. Or even this, you know, which is, it, it looks like uh, referencing um, uh, early Disney um, shorts. Um, what's the one with the, 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 the uh, what's the short called where uh, you've got this sort of guy that, in a, in a train depot and he gets all these of the rabbits or something or packages I don't know anyway it's a kind of sort of um, you know uh, the era of um, Dumbo no train no no Dumbo. later the era of oh, the, the uh, 50s, Alice in Wonderland the 50s, 50s yeah. yeah yeah it was that sort of uh, that sort of look and shape even this this would be see look at these characters you know this is a problem where you fa you're faced with this inventiveness of the of the illustrators and really you know you could have just done that you could have just got it oh i like that i could see a movie i could watch 90 minutes of these characters or the, this as as a human you know these sort of characters i could watch 90 minutes of instead you then decided to water everything down and turn it into a mishmash um and i just don't like it i did not enjoy this uh film at all in terms of its style. Um, now, Kung Fu Panda, they put a lot of work into this, a lot of work, and it shows, and there's a lot of beautiful, you know, uh, backgrounds and things. In many ways, they did achieve this painterly effect, this uh, dramatic uh, well, traditional, use of uh, uh, traditional of, of Chinese, Chinese landscape art, yes, and yeah. fantasy paintings yeah. and things. So there was a nice level of realism in here. Um, and believability this is, this is and a combination color. of Tolkienist and Chinese. Yeah. Stuff, you know. Well, you're dealing with fantasy characters, so that's why they're Hobbit doors, I guess. No, but Pandas, they do Pandaville. have circular doors all over China. Yeah. yeah. Do they? Yeah. Ah, cool. There you go. These are beautiful. I can't remember the name of the artist who did these, but these are these are lovely. If you look at the film that we did on uh, Kung Fu Panda, mm. uh, you'll see these. There's lots and lots of these. If you were to research Kung Fu Panda character design, this artist would come up. So, you know, they did a lot of that. Look how beautiful this is rendered. This is a, a gorgeous scene, uh, you know, t t a, a painting. Didn't get this exactly. They went for a you know different style. You but know, even a film like this, I can't keep saying it enough. I love the illustrations. I just think they should have done the illustrations as a film. When you go to China, um, you go to the galleries and stuff. And this was and an they interesting. Have, they have traditional segment. drawings. 
that are, are 15 feet high and they're drawings. Yeah. They're pencil drawings and they're 15 feet high. Beautiful. So there's a lot of verticality in, yeah. in, in Chinese art, a yeah. lot of verticality. This and is, of course they have to make it into landscape yeah. to make a movie. This is beautiful. Look at the, the yeah. traditional use of uh, watercolours and yeah. things to create this uh, beautiful, believable world. Yeah. You know, the, um, the mountain village, Chinese mountain village. They so use a lot, a lot of, of shadows in this film yeah. too, if I remember. And this, a lot of shadows. this is like the uh, spaghetti western um, uh, Chinese martial arts film slash... Uh, 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 um, game, um, what do they call it? Cutscene or something. This, this was, oh, this is like, I, I forget the whole film, but I remember this. This uh, is my um, my Kill Bill moment. In oh, the film. Your Kill that Bill was, moment. Ma that was absolutely magical. And when I saw that, I said, as good as this film is, if they gave us this, I would I would walk out with a big smile on my hand. So face. that was your Sin City. Yeah, yeah. That's my Tarantino. Oh, well, look, I've forgotten. You know, did they ever? I love a, Tarantino. I've forgotten. I love did Tarantino. they ever get around to killing Bill? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, five fingered death, five oh, five Fingers. fingered palm or something. Mm. So yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of work, obviously, into um, into Kung Fu Panda to create this um, very dramatic scenes. Um, I can't remember what his name is, the baddie in this, but he's a really good one. Really good. Baddie. He's a good baddie. Yeah, I love baddies. They're really a bad good. goodie. Mm. Madagascar 2, Escape from Africa. Or yeah. Escape to Africa, sorry. Um, you know, exploring different patterns and shapes and things. The design of this uh, of this film is really, really good. Yes. Really nice. Yes. Look at those um, savanna trees, yeah. the flat tops. Yeah, it's so evocative. It's, it's great beautiful. when you see. I love seeing these. It's great things. when you see a film like this where, where actually everything got a is caricatured. Like every everything yeah. in the film is caricatured. It's yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, but I'd love to see um, something that is really off the design. You yeah. know, yeah. off model for some. You could. I don't know where you'd use that. You well, know, that looks, dream that, sequence. That looks like it's it out of a little gold, it, if you it looks to, like it's out of a little golden book. Yeah, if mm. you were to animate that, it would be so poignant and yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Why not? Why couldn't you do that? Well, you don't have to be completely slick all the time. Now, these characters, I've got uh, little toys of uh, both him and uh, the female character. They're, uh, they're lovely. The hippopotamuses are, you know, the way that they've designed the, the characters, uh, they're as, as interesting to me as um, the uh, Ice Age characters, uh, which were done by uh, Peter Deceive. You know, and they have that sort of that same level of uh, believability in them. Uh, I think uh, Disney did a version when this came out. So Disney did Lion, a film that was Lion kind of King forgettable, but, uh, apart from one I think scene. Um, but they did a, a take on a jungly sort of scene, and it had a koala in it, which I never could understand why. Well, I mean, you know, um, why in all those make us happy in those Tarzan I hate, movies. I don't like koalas. I yeah, hate them. In those Tarzan movies, I don't know movies, anyone likes koalas. Do you? Everybody loves Probably. koalas. You're, you're the only person on the planet. No. But in all those Tarzan movies, you meet kookaburras, which is an Australian bird. That's true. Yeah. 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 Um, and it had nothing to do with. Or, or swaging the Australian content. Now, just here we go. We go into Funnyville here. This is monsters versus aliens. Are you going into my territory? Are you, you you're using monsters that well, I'm familiar monsters with? Monsters or aliens? Yeah. Which is your territory. So you've got the blob, and you've got these. Oh, yeah. these you've got Mothra. He, he doesn't look anything got, like Steve McQueen. No. <laughs> um, but look at this, folks. You've got this. Uh, that's a fifty-foot woman. Yes, roller skating. Yes. 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 Yeah. But. You look at this scene, oh, Route 66, yeah, you know, yeah, all this stuff. It's fantastic. You, you that's the underbelly of career. LA there. Yes, that's but as an illustrator from today yeah. in Photoshop and all this, looking back into that era, the 1950s, Area 51, you know, Route 66, all of that, the, the colours and all of, all of that evolved and evocative of that era. And then coming up with these beautiful, beautiful character designs. And then look at what they've done with it in the film, and you'd be disgusted because oh, it's disgusting. cookie cut, unbelievably cookie cut. The whole thing, every time they do a human character, bum. They're hard to do. Horrible. Hard to do human characters. In, They're um, all cookie cut. This guy in particular is is awful. Well, that's that's uh, that's a pinch from um, um, 
Dr. Yeah. Strange Love. And and a little bit of um, Mad Fold Ends. Oh yeah. yeah. That looks like Mad Fold Ends. Some of these characters yeah. they've, they've broken their neck. Um, this is very these are very uh, Mad Fold Ends. Um, uh, Al Jaffe. Al Jaffe, yeah. Very Al Jaffe. Look at these years faces. A hundred years old. I think he's hundred and one mm. actually. Yeah. I hope he lives to be in two hundred. Yeah. Um, I hope he never folds. Yeah. Never folds in. Although if he did, he'd make something funny. He would, even on his what, last. What, you could probably. What if he'd have a? He'd, they would try that surely with the the gravestone, wouldn't they? Make it an move interactive it, move experience. It, move it. You fold the tablet. It's hard and to it fold a different story. Um, okay, so this, very interesting. I like this um, this mad approach. You know, they could have done something like that. See the the, the uh, fly character yeah. here. And the, um, the cre- creature from <laughs> with the, the blow up, mo- uh, it's yeah. very adult. Yeah. So the blow up uh, girl floating around, girl, the sex doll. But that, <laughs> yeah. that's, but the that's the creature a beach from, toy. That's the creature from, from the, the Black Lagoon. Yeah, in a tank. So got a yeah. shower next to the block. wash. Look, you wash off the. So this is a very interesting uh, uh, idea. Probably, you know, obvious for obvious reasons they didn't use that. But uh, you know, I like this. I like this. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent behind this character. Really? I think it's a bit hard to. He's a fly-by-night character, isn't he? Yeah, I'm not not a hundred percent by. Um, this is interesting. The whole thing about uh, cows, square and, cows, and aliens. Oh, like you know. Yeah, yeah. One of our cows is missing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually a very Australian. It is shack, that one. Um, again, they're exploring different, uh, you know, ideas. This is the Mothra character. And this is the, uh, the Gill Man. So, you know, really interesting. But the characters, the CGI characters that they ended up with, were cookie cut. Again, how much are these films cost? Uh, I don't know. But uh, and they take 80, what? 120 million. They take what? Um, three to five Half years a billion. to make, or yeah. Um, but they're in t- in production. Pre-production for a couple of years, yeah. so there's no real excuse. Um, How to Train Your Dragon well, was looked, in uh, that, that 2010. Good rich, doesn't it? That, that looks good, rich, doesn't it? Yeah. The character design. Again, you know, if you look at the character designs, this guy will come up. He obviously yeah. did the panda, a lot of the panda drawings. Um, this was not too bad. The characters, the human characters in this film were, were um, you know, nicely um, uh, specialized for this uh, for this film. They weren't. They weren't cookie cut that I could detect, um, and it's a very interesting uh, dynamic between you know it's a boy and his dog, right? Basically, it's a boy and his dog, a boy and his horse, uh, a boy and his dragon, and a boy and his T Rex, which is the premise of um, Primal. Here we have the um, dragon designs are really interesting. The, the world that they create the designs of uh, the dragons. We did a book review on um, how to train your dragon. So if you checked out that, you'll see more artwork that uh, that will knock your socks off. Um, and this again, these are the famous illustrations of uh, I can't remember the name of the illustrator, but they're really, really, really good. So you'll love that. Character designs are, you know, they're as inventive, I guess, as uh, Brave, the character that picks up them. Um, I particularly like the dragons. I thought this was a good choice because uh, she has to have, um, uh, what's her name? Toothless. She has to have the ability to act like a dog. And a cat. And a cat. And a cat. So she's a, yeah. you know, uh, ooh, that's a very um, Totoro... It is a bit Totoro, yes. Um, it's very interesting. But, uh, you know, even that simplicity, um, you know, it's it stands out. It stands out. And, you know, I don't know why they didn't... Uh, they, why not pursue something like that? That would be cool. Look at the level of detail again there. there. Oh, this is a very, um, very Disney moment, isn't it? That's like... Uh, uh, Night on Bear Mountain. Yeah, or... or um, Sleeping Beauty, uh, Sleepy Hollow, mm. or Sleepy Hollow, yeah, that, all that stuff. Shrek Forever After is another part of the franchise. They're expanding into another story. I think this is the third one or the fourth one. Um, 
and there's you know big battle scenes in there. Uh, it's got the I think one of the bad guys or the bad guy is the uh, Pied Piper of Hamlet, oh. which they've uh, you know probably explored to death. Um, interesting, interesting film. Um, you know, but again, you know the Shrek the films. story. Well, like, they're sticking to the story t- fairy yeah. tale. I mean, is, isn't that uh, a, that egg? Yeah, the Russian egg. Yeah, the Russian yeah, egg. The yeah. Fabergé. Fabergé, yeah. yeah. Now, that's what I call a fat cat. Yeah. Yeah. So, exploring more Shrekky type characters, more ogres. And. Um, Megamind. Now, Megamind. Um, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's an interesting, uh, interesting film. Um, it's actually quite watchable. But again, a lot of the characters are not explored enough. They're not designed, uh, you know, specifically by... It looks like it's a, It's not designed by an illustrator. It looks like it's designed by a committee. Or a writer. Yeah. So, um, you know, I would love... I look at these things and I say, this is a possibility. Why didn't they do this? This, yeah. this black and white with, it, with signature colours, muted signature colours. Why not? Mm. You're evoking such a beautiful uh, look and feel, you know. Um, you could have done that. I look at that as an opportunity, and they've missed it. And instead, they've created something else. So there's a certain slickness, I guess, to to Megamind. This is uh, Megamind is kind of like the DreamWorks version of Incredibles, um, and a lot of the illustrators they hired, you know, also worked on some of the Incredibles. I'm not sure if. Um, um, Kevin Dart worked on this, but uh, that's a very Kevin Dartish uh, uh, character design. So it's about super villains and superheroes and things, and um, you know, and this this fish in a fish tank um, theme, which I think they've personally explored a little bit too much. I like the the version in Chicken Little, but not not. Um, so much in this film. Again, you know, it, 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 yeah, char- the characters are, yeah. they have a certain yeah. machine quality, this sort of smoothness about them. So they're kind of like, you know, this looks, you look at this, you say, well, this is interesting, but no, no, this is not the character in, that appeared mm. in the film. It's much slicker and smoother. Formatted. And, yeah. Formatted. Co- well, cookie cut. It's cookie cut. Yeah. So, you know, which is a great, I think it's good for, for production, but it kind of, you've got so much money here. Come on, you've got money and time, you could have done something better. Yeah, come on, come on. The nice take on the Batmobile. Mm. Um, okay, Kung Fu Panda 2, again, that went into a very, they, it's quite darker actually, Kung Fu Panda 2, um, with this character, the peacock, who's the main uh, Was it villain. nighttime He's a lot? He's the, the antagonist. Was it nighttime a lot? Yeah. Rain a lot in that film too. Mm, it did. Yeah. So it's a lot of beautiful um, sets and stories exploring more well, of the lovely. world look and the environment. Those, look at these are incredible gestures. Lovely. This is the stork and I don't know what that is. This looks like a I don't know if this is a fight sequence or um, I think this is something like uh, I think you know, I think it's a Tai Chi that, sequence. <laughs> Karate Kids thing, you know, where they do that sort mm. of, the, the, you know, the crane, mm. the crane doing the crane, <laughs> wax on, wax off. Um, the characters of wolves, I didn't particularly like. I didn't particularly like the wolves. Um, I thought the pigs were working well, but the character designs of the wolves, I thought, lost a lot of its their wolfishness and it looked more like hyenas and didn't have that sort of cunning and, and scariness. Have. Pandas, crocodiles. The crocodiles work really well. Ah, oh, they're really good. They're beautiful. That's uh, reminded me a lot of the crocodiles from um, Disney's um, Rescuers. Oh, yeah. Rescuers. Yeah, and also from Rescuers Down Emperor's Under. New Groove, which also referenced the characters mm-hmm. and the alligators from uh, Rescuers. Alligators or crocodiles? Puss in Boots. Yeah, interesting, uh, interesting film. This looks more. This looks more interesting. Like mm. a, it's supposed to be a, a kind of a, a spaghetti western meets fantasy. Uh, more spaghetti western. 
and um, that was a, that was an interesting uh, kind of uh, uh, story for them. But um, you know, again, it's sort of I don't know. It's it, in some ways the characters uh, stand out. This this character stands out quite well. She's she's quite good. But the other characters I thought were, you know, maybe over rendered. You get to this point where the characters are designed completely out of. Out, they've taken too many hands have gone through this, and um, they end up being uh, a mishmash of too many things. It's almost like designed by committee, which is awful. Um, you know, so I don't know. There's a there, there's some good things in here with the colors and the design of the backgrounds and things like that. But most of the characters, again, like the Shrek fran franchise, I think has become too slick. It's too slick for its own good. Um, <laughs> the beanstalk. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's certainly some some stellar scenes in here, um, but they're no way near as. I mean, this these are photographs. Uh, <laughs> these just copped in. Um, they're nowhere near as interesting as the illustrations. The illustrations are magical. You know, they have that sort of unrendered quality. If they'd done that or tried to get that unrendered quality into the final product, it would have uh, been a totally different. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right because when you, you we were talking about caricatures before, mm. but when you see the fingerprints of the artist on the work, mm. you know the. Oh, it's magic when yeah, you see that. Because it's, that's, yeah, because you're looking at their individual mm. Um, vision. Mm. And, you know... Well, even, you know, look, Madagascar, right? You've got like, stylized I, I characters. I like this, but this has got all sorts of things about the 50s. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is really the 50s. But why on earth didn't you... Why can't you did... Why haven't you done these characters in 3D? Mm. You can do these characters in 3D. Mm. They don't... You know, you can have both eyes on one side of the head. Why not? Yeah, it's Picasso just did it all the time. Yeah, but you can do this in 3D. They've done it. They've done it before. Don't tell me they haven't. So, you know, they have done it before. So you can have this inventiveness in a 3D film and this beautiful um, level of character design, you know, which is all, ooh, it's, it's so simplified and perfect, you know, this sort of great, simple shapes. He always, reminiscent he always of gets excited when he sees blue pencil. Yeah, but it's also the, the, the sim simplicity of the shapes. These are very... Uh, it's a lovely tiger. Elephants, I love I like that tiger. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, stylize them. Renaissance. Even uh, this. Yeah. What they ended up with, the hum this is interesting, what they yeah. ended up with, the human characters, which yeah. was, was shocking. Yeah. It's terrible. This is brilliant. You just go oh, too is, far. Th this was their... This was their eight um, days around the world film, wasn't it? They, yeah. They go travelling. Yeah. Yeah. So these are nice uh, colour mood boards. Mm. Circus. Um, circus part. This is. Uh, is this Miami? <laughs> no, I think this is. Um, oh, I just saw it yesterday, actually. Uh, this is um, the, the Monte Carlo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Rise of the Guardians, this is a really interesting film. And when this came out, um, there was a film hot on its tail called The Guardians of Ghoul, which is uh, uh, about um, owls, which I didn't like. This film I really enjoyed. Um, there's a certain amount of stylization. There is a, a, a tension. You know, they have left a lot of the character designs completed by the illustrator. And I don't know about the rabbits, but the humans were well done. And, yeah, well, uh, some it looks of the, like Sean the, Connery. I think this is a sand It looks like man. Sean Connery's an old man, yeah. doesn't it? You know? Yeah. But look how beautiful and perfect this sketch is. It's fantastic. You know, that is a perfect character. Stick to that profile. Stick to that level of design. And don't slicken it up and add too many details. These are beautiful little boards, these little thumbnail sketches. They're lovely, simple. Perfect, simple and perfect. You know, lovely use of uh, color, simplicity, like 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 a beautiful storybook that opens up, you know, and you just sort of fall in love with it. And in many respects, they used to, they did this, they've done this in the two D film with, um, um, you know, with uh, El Dorado and with um, um, the, the biblical one. Uh, uh, Prince of Egypt. Yeah. So th this, this is, these are some of the character designs. This, I think, remained as it is. 
Uh, this one remained as it is. This one turned into something else, I think. I'll have to see this film again, but um, no, that's the other character. I think this one remained the same. Table three. But the, um, Much like the Jack char Frost. character in the, um, two, uh, uh, Fantasia uh, 2000. Yeah. So the, 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 the Jack Frost character, I think, mm. or whatever that is, the boy. Um, well, he's Puck. Yeah, he's but, Puck. you know, he's more interesting here than he is in the film. I love these moments, you know, anything that you can tr reduce the palette really focuses your attention. It's beautiful, <coughs> beautiful stuff. See, he's not nowhere near as um, spiderly in the film as he is in these illustrations. These illustrations, are, they're really characteristic of, uh, of um, that uh, scene, the emotion of the scene. Touch of Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. This is beautiful. See, this is interesting. This is lovely. Mm. Why couldn't they leave the design like that? The, I don't know. They kind of smooth the edges off and change it and ruin it. Okay, here we go to Carter Goodrich Country. Carter Goodrich did a lot of the designs for um, the Crudes. Yeah. And um, it really shows. Now, Crudes are a beautiful example of where an illustrator can come up with these character designs and these let them go and you stick to those character designs you come up with individual qualities that, mm. that are really exceptional mm. the crudes is a brilliant film it's a brilliant looking film mm. and everything in it is is perfect as far as I it's concerned. a great story too it's a great yeah. narrative you know yeah so this guy dynamo as far as i'm concerned who come up with these uh, characters that uh, that are uh, absolutely awesome the cat is designed by, I think, by another uh, uh, designer who worked on, um, on um, uh, Stitch. <laughs> this is very, this is beautiful. Do, uh, yeah, uh, 1950s simplicity and magic. Yeah, look at this. Some, some great, this is, uh, this is like uh, David Chu. Um, Cheshire Cat. Yeah, yeah. But, the, you know, there's it's so many worlds and environments that they explore. It's Kellogg's land. Yeah. That's great. Um, it looks like Carter again. Or maybe not, but it's... No. I, no, this is not Carter. But I don't think so. His signature would be there somewhere. Um... You know, there's a lovely uh, Someone's worked on cohesiveness Someone's to the designs and, and the character designs. And this is Carter. Mm. You can see his little signature there. So, you know, pretty much um, responsible for a lot of the, uh, the characters and look and feel. These are lovely uh, mood boards. And to their credit, they stuck with a lot of the drama here. Not as dramatic as that. This is mm. if they'd done that, this would have been a magic. That's a that's a Academy Award winning scene. That one. If they'd stuck with this lighting, this is brilliant. That's like a film noir. Awesome. Very interesting film. This one have not seen. Not interested in the least little bit. Um, I love these these designs, these drawings. Mm. All the drawings for these characters, brilliant. What they ended up with was this horrible, slick mishmash. Um, what, they had to throw cars yeah. at them? It's cars. Oh, it's just like, look at this. Look at that. Yeah. And now look at that. And this is like, you know, it's too much. It's just too much. The li you, you sacrifice everything for realism. And really, for what end? For be what end? Because, be turn back. Why would to you want to have sketch. realism? Turn back the original exposure. But why would you want to have realism? Why can't you yeah, explore well, that? Yeah, but you can't, mate. You can't merchandise that. You can't turn that into a soft, yes, soft you can. toy. Oh, of course you can. No, you can. Yeah, of oh, course you can. Oh, you can. Oh, okay. That would make a better soft toy because it's flimsier. You break the eyes off in five minutes, then you have to buy a new oh, toy. Oh, great! That, isn't that there you go. How's that? You're obviously a toy maker. Yeah. Old planned obsolescence himself. Yeah. Lovely uh, uh, character. Um, range there of size and shape and color mm -hmm. uh, each showing personality even though they're pretty neutral uh, front on poses <laughs> it's good um, you know there's a lot of inventiveness you can put into snails 
Yeah. Um, other than having to have these, you know, gizmos on their back uh, all mm. the time, mm. um, you know, there's a lot of sort of individuality they could put with the, uh, with the the eyes and things like that. But of course, that it kind of comes down to how it's machined uh, and create, you know, and they create this sort of um, slickness uh, in the end. That looks like Melbourne. Um, Oh, oh here we go. Peabody, oh, Peabody. God. Mr. Peabody. Here we go. Here we go. This Peabody film, I, I walked out of this film, and uh, I didn't see the end of it, not interested in it. It was disgusting. It's, um, there was a lot of promise here. They, they bought the franchise. They everyone talked it up. It's a great idea. Every, it is, yeah. but everyone talked this up. It's got a terrible ending. I hate this film. Everybody talked this film up and they said, oh, we're really true to the original. We love Rocky and Bullwinkle. No, you didn't. These are the illustrators, the illustrations. Yes, they like Rocky and Bullwinkle. What you ended up with was a horrible, cookie-cut, mishmash film. And um, So you're saying disgusting. buy the book and forget the film. That's what you're saying. Watch the original Rocky and Bullwinkle on YouTube. Don't watch this film. It's junk. Hey, Rocky, watch me pull this a rabbit is, out of this the This is the worst See, thing ever. Let's not believe. This looks like... Um, oh, I could know that. This looks like... Um, Kevin Dart. Now, Kevin Dart did, uh, did some beautiful film designs for um, uh, Big Hero 6. Okay. And uh, a lot of stuff. But he, he's got a beautiful s- aesthetic. This uh, lovely uh, sense of, uh, you know, reduced tones and reduced colours and things, and the use of textures and things. Why can't you do that in a film? Why can't you do that in a film? You know, I don't understand it. Why does it have to be slick? Why does it have to be this jelly bean? Why can't you just leave the lowest f- common denominator? Leave the thing alone. The lowest common denominator. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a jelly bean. You can just create something that's created, that's truthful to the to the illustrators who have already done their research, folks. Mr. Producer, they've already done their uh, research. Mr. Producer, they've watched the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. They know the aesthetic. They know the time, you know, and the audience would beautifully respond to it. And how to paint your way, uh, your, your dragon. So this again. is the second one of the uh, film franchises. A little bit darker, heavier, bigger dragons, and were bigger and better. Um, exploring the world a little bit better, a little bit more, um, creating more dragons, obviously, um, which is interesting. These sort of tusky effects, tusky dragons, you know. Um, and this is based on a um, one of those stonefish um, mm. things, you know, the uh, spiny fishy things. So, that, you know, the, the idea of dragons, designing a dragon is really good. It's like any kind of monster, I guess. Um, dragons are, are sort of a chimeric aspect because they're they're derived from a whole different a- a bunch of animals, bats and birds and lizards and dra- and dinosaurs and all kinds well, of things. Well, they found dinosaur so, bones and mm. they were so big they said they must have come from dragons. Yeah, but dragons had already a, a, a history of um, of uh, being in in coats of arms and in stories all over the world. So you know, there's a lovely. Um, um, zoology aspect to the to the dragon films, and also um, this again the the panda the guy that did the panda he did the um, he did these beautiful designs you can, you can look for them um, and we did the panda book and I think the how to train your dragon book as a book review so you can have a look at those films and, and check out the um, the beautiful artwork. Here we go, home, 2014. Missed this film. Wasn't particularly interested in it. Um, you know, I, I'm not really enamoured of, gra- of uh, you know, like doing this great, getting a great comedian to do the voice and the character of a film. And I don't believe that's the driving element and of the film. And characters. As good as Aladdin was, I don't believe that uh, Robin Williams was the driving element behind the Aladdin's success. I just think it's the whole aesthetic. Well, he pushed the, the animators for a start. Yeah, but only for Aladdin. Not only for um, the genie, not for anybody else. I actually loved um, the... Um, the, the character of uh, Jafar uh, much better. Well, that, he that pushed him like, too. He pushed him too. Yeah, but that was more like the, the you know, the, um, based on the um, Jafar from um, uh, 
uh, what's that Sabu film? The... Yeah, Made During the War. Yeah. The Thief of Baghdad. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was he was the somnambulist in um, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Oh, you're talking about uh, Conrad Vert. Right. Right, yeah. He was Jafar. And he's the guy who gets shot. He's the Russian, uh, the, the Nazi gets shot in the end of um, Casablanca. Yeah. So quick round up the usual suspects. Here, these okay, like the the Pixar films, right? Um, wh- which Pixar film was derived from Shapes? There was a short film they did, and then there was a film um, called Inside Out or something. Or was that the, the film? Isn't that about um, motions? Yeah, that's a bit of motion. Color and shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this there's a theory, yeah, right? Yeah. Round shapes are are, 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 pro, are cool. Square shapes are stubborn. Uh, triangle shapes are scary. Yeah. Now again, the same concept of using color, the interpretations of color to represent emotions, it's fair enough, but so, it doesn't always work that way. So, it's the same thing with this. So this is apart from being so scary. You think this is an represents stability. It's based on an experiment and it didn't work. Is that what you're trying to say? Look, it's an interpretation of sh- it's a psychological association of shapes and colours to uh, things in our environment that we primarily mm, uh, mm. Uh, 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 react to, right? So, ooh, sharp, pointy, ooh, sharp, knives, knives, sharp things. But also the Pentagon, no, the, the, the White House, the Pyramid of Giza, right, which is solidity. It's not pointy, um, uh, you know, well, blocks. it's stable. It's stable, too. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like, okay, you can attach significance to objects and shapes and colours associated with things, looky-likey things looky from likey. our environment. Looky likey. But those looky-likey things are not predominant, okay? So this is not a predominantly scary shape. This is an interpretation. You're just using this in this context. So contextually, yes, it is scary and sharp and pointy and dangerous. But in reality, this is also stability, right? Mm. Um, this all those Renaissance Madonnas, yeah, in a triangle so, form. Yeah, so this is like this is um, uh, soft and cuddly and approachable and things, right? Mm. But this is also the shape of the coronavirus. So you know, there's a lot Without of the things sticking off. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of things in there that uh, actually the uh, interpretive, interpretive and contextual. The, That's all I'm saying. The circle is interpretive the, and contextual. The circle is the oldest symbol in the world. Yeah. That's the most used symbol. So, yeah, interesting. I think it's their um, Shrek moment in many ways, this film. You know, this kind of like looking at things and trying to come up with something that's familiar, I think, is a, well, is a, a popular a, thing to do a, in Hollywood. I don't but, know about popular, but it's a, it's a, it's a great idea to have to try, and, yeah, try and do it. At I, once. Don't know. I don't know. Well, I haven't seen this film. No. It's, it doesn't look like this. I can tell you that. Okay. It does not look like these illustrations. These illustrations have a style and things. I can't remember this. Uh, I think this is probably... He, he'd be definitely, the he'd like be definitely based on a sort of a scary starfish. Yeah. With um, toothpicks in his shoulders. Of, yeah, that spiky shape. Gorg. So... You know, how to design scary things. Starfish. Ooh, they're scary, aren't they? Um, see, I love this sort of simplicity and the little gag pro- uh, qualities of the, of the characters. Um, I love all that stuff. I think, you know, well, there is a, coming up with this grand project, this there, big there is, there film. Is, there is a, a theme story, in animation narrative. of making characters really simple, really yeah. simple. And oh, this, this, is, this, is this is the bunch the gang. of people. And the people aren't in the Katzenberg. photo. The people aren't in the photo. They, they've got drawings of them. Mm. And they're large caricatures too, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I don't know who that character is. The I water. Know, I remember that one. Oh, oh wetty. Oh, wetty. Bubblery. Bubbler. The bubbler. Yeah. Um, these are all a bunch of uh, credits. So the music, storyboarding. And awards. Um, and awards. And awards. Big deal. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Just uh, I don't know, folks. This is a, it's an interesting journey, uh, but you know, good and bad. I think overall, um, it's a great book. I think it's a great book yes. overall. I think DreamWorks an incredible force to be reckoned with. 
um, and they've done some incredible, you know, uh, uh, wonderful, exciting films, you know, and they've also done some stinkers, which uh, <laughs> I don't care for whatsoever. Well, uh, they, they took on Disney and they took on um, um, uh, all the other... Pixar. Pixar. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, and Sony. Uh, and Sony and all yeah. these guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So overall, I think they're great. I love uh, their films, uh, mostly. But when they get into cookie cutting, of course, that's where I kind of say, bye-bye, see you later. And don't please don't touch Bullwinkle again. Um, all right, this is Franz Cantor and... Hey, Rocky. <laughs> Jim Bridges. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.